Let's talk about what's going on with this season. What is up, Finn fans, potentially NFL fans, fans of football in general? If you can tell by the title, I'm going to be talking about something that came up, uh, I think it was yesterday. Vince Beagle and um, Tom Pelissero also released uh, some news that I want to talk about because I feel like this news and this update has more of an effect on what could happen this season than the other big thing that's happened in the world. And then we're going to get to one of you guys' comments of the day, which involves the wide receiver group. So let's jump right into this Mamma Jamma. Actually, no, real quick, going live Saturday at 1 p.m. It is the weekend that I will be going live. So this Saturday, 1 p.m., the 11th, I will be live. Come hang out. We're going to talk about the season. We're going to talk about the 2020 season and things that we could look forward to and all that jazz. So, yes, Saturday, 1 p.m., I'll be live. So let's jump into this. So Tom Pelissero tweeted out essentially that the NFL, so the NFL, if you guys don't know what's happening right now, the NFL came out and said, hey, we're going to get rid of the first and fourth preseason game, just have the second and third play, we'll figure it out, so you have play one home, one away game for all 32 teams, NFLPA came out and said, hey, how about we don't play any, how about we don't have a preseason at all? So then there was that whole debacle, again, a new CBA was agreed upon in, I think, back in March. So a new CBA was kind of already agreed upon. So there was that deal. Then the NFL proposed, came out and proposed this preposterous, just ridiculousness, that they proposed to take 35% of the player's salary be held in escrow, which essentially is like an account. If you buy a house, you essentially put a certain amount of money in escrow. Essentially, it's like... You know, when you rent an apartment, you put the security deposit down. That's kind of like what they're talking about. So take 35% of the player's salary, hold it in escrow, essentially hold it in an account that can um, help manage the cost during the 2020 season. So the owners, the billionaire owners want to take 35% of all of the player's salary and put it in an account and hold it to make up for potential losses during the 2020 season. Billionaire owners want to take 35% of all, I'm saying it again, of all NFL players. Not all of them are Patrick Mahomes. Not all of them are guys that are making millions. Some of them are making 100000 if they're lucky. And they want to put it in escrow to help with the 2020 season losses. The billionaires want the players to do this. The owners want to do this to the players. Hey, owners, why don't you take a certain percent of the money you make from ticket sales, from jersey sales, from all the stuff that you've made millions upon, billions on. Why don't you put that aside? So the NFL players are very upset about that. The NFL PA said this could be a reason for the players to actually just say, no, if you're going to try to pull this and you're going to try to do this, we're not going to play this season. So if, like I said, if you tell by the title – the biggest risk to this season might not be what's happening in the world, might not be the potential of you know a player getting sick, losing time playing, how are they going to play, how are they going to keep everyone healthy. It might be the fact that the owners are trying to, again, get one over on the, on the players and take 35% of their salary and put it in a, an account to make up for the losses of the 2020 season when it comes to ticket sales and all that other stuff. We all know that jersey sales aren't that down in the dumps because Tua had one of the highest ranking jersey sales. Tom Brady with his Tampa Bay had jersey crazy jersey sales. You know Cam Newton's going to have a ton of crazy jersey sales with the Patriots. It became official today. He's officially signed a one-year deal with the Patriots. I don't think any of us really care. Even though I made two videos on it, apparently I care. Um, But yeah, so when this news came out, I was like, I need to make a video on this and I need to talk about this because I think it's utterly ridiculous that the owners are asking the players, the ones that are on the field, the ones that are putting themselves more at risk of potentially catching this to to take some of their salary away to make up for losses of the... Why don't the owners do that, being that they're billionaires? 
Then Vince Beagle came out and he said, here's two thirds of your salary to do the same dangerous job in ev even more dangerous conditions, not to mention, mention restriction on our personal life that won't apply to the owners. Sounds about right. That in a nutshell is how the players feel. So yes, you're going to have these players come. You're going to have them play the season. You're going to have them potentially be in contact with other players, which then would have to inhibit them from potentially seeing their wives, their kids, all that stuff. But you want to take 35% of their salary away. Um, the owners need to get their heads out of their butts. And that's me saying it nicely because I could have been a little bit more meaner with that. Um, it just it doesn't make sense to me. you got to look at what baseball is doing, basketball is doing, hockey is doing. They're in the process of starting their season. Baseball, it's in the process of starting their season. Some guys, some teams are already starting to play, like little scrimmage games and stuff. So you're you're starting to we're gonna get baseball, right? Basketball, you know, the Nets are getting decimated, but they're trying to get that going. Hockey, they're trying to get it going. Football, right? I'm not. I'm. I'm gonna sound biased, but football is probably the number one sport in the United States. A lot of people are depending on football. To pull this on these players, like Vince said, you just there could have been a different way. Owners have gone by. Don't mess with these players' salaries, especially some of these guys who aren't making much. Especially some of these guys on rookie contracts that aren't making much. Fifth round, fourth round, third round picks not making much. You're gonna take thirty five percent after <clears throat> they're gonna put themselves and their bodies on the line for you. It just doesn't make sense to me, and it just you're just like. Now I see why some players sit out to get that better contract because if not, they're going to get screwed over in the end. But I thought I would talk about this. I thought I would bring this up because, you know, I'm pretty sure we're all really hoping for a season, especially with the Dolphins. There's a ton of promise this year. Again, I'll talk more about that Saturday, 1 p.m. But we want a season this year. But if stuff like this keeps happening, the NFL and the players might go on strike or do something and we might not get a season because of the NFL and the owners just being complete DBs or D bags. I can't, I'm not, I'm going to keep it classy guys. I'm going to try to keep it classy. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep you guys updated on this. Like, like I said, as soon as this came out, as soon as I heard this, I thought, let me let them know. Let's talk about it. I want to see, know what you guys have to say. So like usual, be sure to comment below. I want to know what you guys have to say about this. I want to know your feelings on it. Do you think it's fair to take 35% of the player's salary and hold it in, account, in an account to make up for the losses of the 2020 season and finances? Or do you think it should be more towards the owners? Do you think the owners should take on this responsibility? I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say about this. I think it's important to talk about it. that's why essentially i'm talking about it because it really really will affect the start of the season and if there is a season more than i think the other thing which again i'm not going to talk about because it's youtube but be sure to comment below i'm really interested to hear what you have to say and we'll get you guys comment of the day this comment comes from dan the film gent i like that name very nice name i wonder if you're into film me too. He says, comment of the day. Hey, Doug, great analysis on some of the depth with the wide receivers and tight ends like Parker, Gazicki, etc. But I noticed one player you don't really mention that much is Alan Hearns. So my question is, what do you really expect from Hearns since the Finns signed him to a contract extension this past season? Yes, you are correct that Miami Dolphins did give him, I think it was a two-year contract extension. Essentially, yes, he's on the books for two more years, $7 million. Um, This year, he's going to cost about $2.9 million. Uh, and a cap hit, and then he, there's a potential out in 2021 with um, about a 400,000 dead cap hit. But again, even this year, it's an 800,000 dead cap hit if they do end up cutting him. So, you know, he's going to make $2 million this year, a little about $3 million. Next year, he'll make about $3.5 million. But again, they can cut him this year, 800,000 dead cap. They can cut him next year, 400,000 dead cap. So, yes, no, no one's really talking about Alan Hearns when it comes to the wide receiver core. Um, everyone's talking about, you know, Devontae Parker had a great season last year. Preston Williams had a really good season before he got injured. Albert Wilson, you know, he was really hot in 2018, had his injury. Jakeem Grant, speedy guy, we saw what we could do. We always talk about those four. We never talk about, you know, Ford. Um, we never talk about... Um, Alan Hearns. We never talk about the other guys. Now, Alan Hearns is a very good, solid guy. They obviously signed him to a very team-friendly contract. Um, and if you could tell by the dead cap and how much cap it will, he'll actually affect towards the team. When it comes to Alan Hearns, like I said, when players started to get injured, like Preston Williams, um, he stood up 
and he came out and he actually played some really good games. With this Miami Dolphin offense with Chan Gailey, he does right, like to run a lot of three wide receiver base sets. So the Dolphins probably will keep a good amount of wide receivers. Expect five to six wide receivers potentially on the starting roster when normally you use, carry about four. Expect that much because, again, the base set is round three. You want that depth. So to have Alan Hearns, to have Devontae Parker, Preston Williams, um, Albert Wilson, and Jakeem Grant, that's a good core of wide receivers. Um, but he is not talked a lot about because you know he had the injury against the Dallas Cowboys with the concussion, kind of disappeared a little bit. He has his blips here and there. He did have a good uh, season with the Jacksonville Jaguars in 2015 when he had over 1,000 yards receiving. But other than that, you know, it's 400 yards, 400 yards, two, almost 300. Last year had 402 touchdowns. You know, averages 13 yards a reception. Again, he needs to do a little bit more, but again, it was on an offense that had nothing to really try to compare or figure out what type of team this is going to be off of last year. It's just, it was a complete restart last year. So with Alan Hearns, you know, I would like to see what he could do. He's going to compete. But again, if he if they find out like, ah, eh, he's not that great, they could just cut him and it'll be 800,000 cap, uh, dead cap hit and wouldn't really be that big of a, of a cap hit with Alan Hearns. So I think with Alan Hearns, he's another competition. I think guys that you'll probably look at that they'll probably stick around is, you know, they brought back Albert Wilson. He actually took a pay cut. Um, Jakeem Grant got his contract extension. He got Devontae Parker. He got a huge contract extension. And you have Preston Williams, the young up-and-comer. And then we got some guys, uh, Kirk Merritt and all these other undrafted wide receivers that it's going to be big competition at the wide receiver core which is probably one of the deepest positions we have. So with Alan Hearns, he just needs to step up more and show that he can be more consistent. But other than that, no one really talks about him because there's not really much to talk about since 2015. Other than that, he, he hasn't done anything for the past four or five years. But yeah, thank you for the comment. Hope I answered your question. Um, but yeah, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'll be live Wednesday, 1 p.m. Wanted to come out, make this video, talk about that that this proposal from the NFL uh, kind of irked the players the wrong way. Hopefully they amend it, they fix it, they address it somehow, because if not, it is a big hiccup in potentially having the season happen. I just really want to talk about it because it's important. Uh, Friday, you'll get another video. Uh, I think I'm going to talk about my favorite Miami Dolphin games. So again, comment below if you want me to talk about that. It's my favorite games, not the best games of all time, but just more my favorite games, top favorite games, 10, I think I'm doing. So comment below, let me know. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter. As soon as news breaks like this stuff, you know, the 49ers are talking about uh, trading another one of their running backs, or I think one of their running backs talks about he wants to be traded. They're going to have no running backs in San Francisco. We already got Brita. You know, they're going to be trading right running backs. Talks about that on Twitter. So be sure to go check me out on Twitter and Instagram. Check out Fans of Fan Network. Like I said, uh, tomorrow we're going to have a big meeting. We're going to talk about the release of the website. So as soon as I know about that, I'll let you guys know. Also, the Twitch channel. Be sure to check that out. Check my Twitch channel out. I haven't, you know, gone live yet, but I will. Twitch.tv slash Dougley Duron. Check that out. But other than that, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. I will see you guys uh, Saturday. 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Going to go live for about an hour or so. It, it all fluctuates how good the live stream goes, how much stuff we talk about. If I go over an hour, but I usually like to keep it around an hour. But also, you know, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell so you know all that stuff. Also, check out DolphinsTalk.com. Great site. All Dolphin content, especially mine, is on there. But other than that, I'll see you guys Friday with the next video. And I'll definitely see you Saturday at 1 p.m. But like usual, stick classy. Ends up.